And we need to talk about some special deep DSO features. Recording. We can record fast moving, moving signals and then play them back and study them in detail. We particularly recommend this for secondary ignition. Studying secondary ignition signals, we can find a great deal of information in just a few minutes. Invert. It's predominantly used with ignition signals, particularly on DIS, where one coil is inverted and the other one is right side up. Peak detection. This is a special function where the DSO keeps the peaks of the waveform from jumping around. It appears, disappears. You begin to think there's something wrong when there's not. This is true on primary and secondary. And the graph traces it over a long period of time. Very good for looking at certain things like coolant temperature and other things that may change in time. And zoom allows you to zoom in on the slow trace and look at a portion of it. Now let's take a look at some of these artifacts we're going to be talking about. Aliasing is a phenomenon in analog to digital conversion in which the frequency of the converted signal is lower than that of the original signal. This is what causes some of those peaks to apparently disappear. This happens when the sampling frequency is too low or the screen's update rate is too slow. You see distortion artifacts. Distortion doesn't mean the signal is bent. It just means it's not what you expect to see. You see traces walking jigged little lines up and down. Let's have a look at what this looks like. Notice the arrows are pointing to two spikes that have apparently disappeared. Now, we tried showing this live, but it jumped around so much, it was much easier to stop and show you this frozen in time. What you see here is you would think that the first fifth cylinder has a problem. It doesn't. It is absolutely normal. That spike has disappeared. If you had your peak detection on, or your scope had peak detection, this would show up as a normal signal. It would not happen. Be very careful if you're using a non-automotive scope with the secondary or primary ignition, you may get into the same situation on low resolution screens and slow sweep speeds. Now let's get back and talk about the controls that we got to look at. Here we see that channel A is on. It's a one channel. B, C, and D are off. Now we're using the Pico in this case, but you're going to have similar actions in others. This is the only channel that indicates anything. It's on automatic voltage scale. It says we're triggering on channel A. You have to pay attention to your scope and what it's telling you. It also says we're on auto trigger, which means we're going to cover about 50% of the amplitude somewhere in that range, which is a good setting. Remember, if sweep speed is slow enough to get several pulses on the screen at one time. And we're going to trigger when the voltage is rising in this particular case. Here's the start of the pattern. You'll notice it doesn't start at the far left edge. It starts indented slightly. If you want to know exactly where it starts, it says it's starting 4% from the edge. This is the starting spot. Most scopes have this capability. Triggering is set at 5.892 volt level. That's just telling you what the auto triggering has determined is a good triggering level. Paying attention to all of this will help you understand things. This means the signal is going to lock in any time the voltage rises above 5.8 volts approximately. We have a second channel turned on. We have a fast and a slow. Channel B is now turned on and it's automatic. The start of the pattern is set for 50% from the edge. So you can see we can make dramatic changes in the pattern of where it starts. Now we have multiple voltage scales. You're going to have different colors, different scales. The blue scale is on the left is for channel A. The B scale is the red scale on the right. And you can remember you have sliders so you can move these around to make them easier to view and they don't interfere with each other. We have them slightly overlapping here. Its choice is yours. They could be totally overlapping if they're both set to the same spot which can get confusing at times. The choice is what you're looking for. You're trying to look at a particular event in time. Now we've turned on channel C. In this case it's green. The green channel is the second scale on the left. There is a blue and a green on the left. There's a red on the right. Now channel D is on. Channel D is the orange channel. At the bottom the scale for that is on the right. Now we've added the channel 1, 2, 3, 4, a, B, C, D, 
just to show you how you have to try to keep track of all of them. But when you're looking at things like we've been looking at before, it's the best way to analyze some of this. Now we just kind of got rid of some of the arrows so you can see everything in real time.